In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers, welcome, welcome on this most joyous day as we celebrate the graduation of our law school here at the University of Notre Dame. Of course, most law schools begin their commencement exercises inside of a church. Here at the University of Notre Dame, we find truth grounded in the love of God. The love of God who became a human being like us, who shared all things with us. And so we gather in this most sacred place to quiet our hearts. In the midst of the excitement, the joy, the blustery, beautiful day we enjoy here in South Bend, Indiana, we quiet our hearts and put ourselves in God's gracious presence. Many of you have been to the Basilica many times. For you, this is old hat to come and pray in this house of prayer. For others of you, this is your first time to the Basilica, to the University of Notre Dame. Whether you're here for the first time or many times, welcome. Know that you very much have a home here. And the only thing you have to do today, friends, the only job you have is to pray. To pray in thanksgiving, to pray in hope for these, our graduates. Sound good? Then let us pray. Good and gracious God, we come together this morning with thankful hearts for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us during our years here at Notre Dame. You have challenged us to grow in intellect and training, in conscience and in generosity, and you have helped us to grow through the grace of your Spirit. May these graduates always be united in prayer with Notre Dame, our mother, and imitate her surpassing reverence and holiness. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Please be seated.
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased. Upon him I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out, nor shout, nor make his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow dim or be bruised until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you have learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture 
is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and by his kingly power, proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and be diverted to myths. But you, be self-possessed in all circumstances. Put up with hardship. Perform the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus told them a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. I never really knew my childhood home until I left it and then returned. Maybe you've had a similar experience leaving for college, then going home for the first time. It's a startling realization to find everything the same, just as it was, and yet entirely different. You almost feel like you're lodging in a hotel that you've stayed at before. You know your way around, and the people who greet you at the door are familiar, yet you know it's not the same place that you left. Not because others have taken your place, but because you're a different person. You've grown up. You've moved on. That's why people say that you can't go back to your childhood home again. They claim that since our world, since life, keeps moving, your home cannot once more be the same place where you first learned to walk, or to create, or to love. It's different, because you're different. I disagree, wholeheartedly. Because our childhood homes aren't perishable realities. They can't be if they've made us anything at all. 
I'm with Miranda Lambert on this one. There's a house in Denver at 5051 South Emporia Street that built me. A house that continues to build me as I remember it. As I remember who I am each day. Our homes aren't meant to be mausoleums. We don't bury our former selves there as if to preserve a moment of our personal history that would perish otherwise. If you went to my childhood home on Emporia Street, you would find no Lego spaceports or train sets assembled in our family room, no St. Thomas More grade school uniform with that itchy red cardigan sweater hanging in the closet as you might have found 20 years ago. In fact, you won't even find my parents there. They've moved since then. And yet, I return to that house on Emporia all the time, seeking memories of the person my mother and father hoped I would be. If you asked me where I learned to be generous, I can show you the bunk beds my parents asked me to share with our multiple foster children. If you want to know how I learned to be faithful, I'll pull out the Advent wreath around which my family prayed and sang and waited for Jesus to come. If you're concerned about whether I understand honesty, you can sit in my dad's office chair, a place he seemed to go whenever I lied in order to be disappointed in me. And if you care about where I grew to love others, I'll point out our kitchen table for six place I sat almost every night before I left home for the first time. It's the same on West 131st Street in Overland Park, Kansas, the same on Fairmont Drive in Daly City, California, the same at 127 Holly Tree in Brandon, Florida, the same on Loveland Miamiville Road in Loveland, Ohio. The furniture and clothes and toys, even the houses themselves, they're all things we eventually leave. But the lessons attached to them, the people we were and are and hope to become, those stick with us forever. That's the point we find St. Timothy trying to make. But you, Remain faithful to what you have learned and believed because you know from whom you learned it. Remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, to all that calls you forward in service and truth. Remain faithful to the living and enduring word of God, Christ's love burning within us. And not just for God's sake, Listen again to what Timothy says. All scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. Perform the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. By their baptism into Christ's life, death, and resurrection, Christians become God's love for the world. That's you, friends. You are Christ's hands and feet. You help to secure the rights of God's chosen ones who call out to him day and night. God's chosen ones who include the widow, the orphan, the migrant, the beggar, the prisoner, the infant, the elder, the worker. And so Timothy implores each of us this day, remember who you are. Remember this house that built you. It builds you still. Graduates, I hope you return to Notre Dame often. This house that built you, seeking memories of the men and women you hoped you would be. Because our world needs you to build on the gospel you found here. Where our world excludes and divides, build on love. Tell the world, I went to a school where we made it work, 
where we all had a home, where we shared life together. I know it can work. Love built me. Where our world despairs real justice, build on hope. Tell the world I learned in classrooms where hearts outpaced minds in seeking solutions to all that you fear. You're never forgotten. Hope built me. Where our world believes only in itself, build on faith. Tell the world I loved in a church where God made me his child, where Christ called me his friend, where the spirit transfigured. I believe in joy and grace and resurrection. Faith built me. Sometime this weekend, stop by those classrooms, those cafes, those clinics where you learn to be lawyers. Walk through the halls you hallowed by your generosity and faithfulness and honesty and love these past three years. Share with each other so many memories of God's grace used to grow you in the precious and chosen image of his Son, Jesus Christ, who gives us his mother, Our Lady Notre Dame, in whose heart you will always, always find home. Now at a stand. Trusting in the unending care and compassion of God, let us bring our prayers before him. For the church, that it might always be a witness to God's love and a champion for his justice, and mercy throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our son, Hyanari Potatula and Dawin, a Yenin and Niho, Realtish Avonu, Erwahalesh and Ginadena, Agasalana Nadriha, a Tuskrifa, Igri Gakdenagan. Let us pray to the Lord. for judges, lawyers, and all those engaged in legal practice. May they use their talents and opportunities to enrich the lives of their clients and their communities. And may they labor for a just and fair body of laws. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. For the families of the class of 2017, in gratitude for years of support and love, and for all those upon whom we call for help and guidance in our lives, that their generosity of spirit and time will be met with an outpouring of God's blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Por los pobres, los oprimidos, y por quienes no tienen a alguien que hable por ellos, para que podamos representar su causa haciendo la nuestra. Que la misericordia de Dios esté con ellos. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the class of 2017, may we find happiness and success in answering God's calling to the legal profession and bringing justice to our communities. May the Holy Spirit continue to guide us in all of life's challenges, and may we remain close to one another and to Notre Dame 
to the Notre Dame community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kanyikbe ekbere maka ebum no bia inile. Kachineke site na ifu na nyonwere neba ino. Zanye ekbere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, from many nations and with grateful hearts, we praise you and we thank you for all your blessings given through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us gather all the joys and sorrows of our lives as we join together in the prayer Jesus Christ himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Before the final blessing, just a quick word of invitation. This wouldn't be a Holy Cross institution if we didn't quickly follow prayer with a meal. And so, of course, you are all welcomed back to the Notre Dame Law School for brunch prior to our diploma ceremony this afternoon. And now I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Please respond amen to each of the following invocations. Every good gift comes from the Father of light. May he grant you his grace and every blessing and keep you safe in your passing from this place. Amen. May the Lord grant you unwavering faith, constant hope and love that endures to the end. Amen. May he order your days and your work in his peace, hear your every prayer and lead you to everlasting life. Amen. And may almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our prayer together is ended for now. Go forth and announce the good news to the ends of the earth.